Welcome, I'm Deepak Devjani, I'm a CTO, and I work with founders to help build and grow their companies. In these Deep Talk series, we focus on some of the biggest companies today, how do they make their money, and what did they do to grow into the companies they are. In today's episode, we're focusing on Robinhood. So Robinhood is one of the many apps that allows us to invest our money, even a little bit of it. It allows us to buy stocks, ETFs, American treasury documents, cryptocurrencies, options, whole lot of things. Uh, on its application. Now, since it's come to market, it has given rise to a slew of competitors, Acorn, uh, Webull, Stash Invest, Ali Invest, and even some of the more traditional players like E-Trade and TD Ameritrade. So what makes Robinhood so special? Well, it launched in 2013, right? At that point in time, literally any brokerage you went to or any app, any business that you went to that helped you invest your capital charged you commissions on every trade you place. So every time you would either buy something, sell something, put options, no matter what trade you put in, you pay the commission per trade. Forget what happens with your actual stock. Forget all that, you're just paying to play. And you also had to hold a pretty heavy minimum amount of investment with them in order, in order to work with them. Rabino comes to, the, comes to the market and just blows all that out of the water, says, you know what? You could place trades for $0. You can start your account with zero dollar minimums. That was groundbreaking when it first came out. Now, it was so impactful that since then, some of the goliaths of the industry, like Meritrade, Charles Schwab, all these big companies have done away with the biggest money makers they had, with one of the biggest money makers they had, commission fees. So Robinhood literally paved the way or did away with a practice that has kept Wall Street brokerages making money for decades. Let's do a quick tiny note on its launch strategy. Robinhood didn't just come to market and say, here you go, we are open, let's do it. No, you had to get on to a wait list and be invited to use the app. And this created sort of an intrigue. So much so that in the early days, within, within days of, its, of it launching this, it had signed up over 50,000 users to a wait list. Now, how do you grow this? Well, the second thing that did was it, it gamified it told its waitlist users that, hey, if you recommend or refer your friends to this, you could climb up the waitlist and get into the application sooner than others. By the time it got to the Apple App Store, it already had a million people signed up to its waitlist. About two thirds of these folks were just folks who were referred to it by their friends. By the end of last year, 2019, it had about six million users actively using its application. In just the first quarter of 2020, while all of us have been home, Robinhood managed to add 3 million people, 3 million new people to its platform just in that quarter. That's something. Revenues for Robinhood are expected to hit $700 million, which itself would be a 250% jump from last year. So Robinhood is growing and growing fast. Now let's focus on the real reason you all are here. How does Robinhood make money? Robinhood has a few different revenue streams. So I've listed them here, back, back on my board here. First one is payments from order flow. About 70% of their quarter one revenues this year came from this thing. So let's, say you, let's say you have a stock, you have a share of a company, and you want to sell it at $100, right? Back in the day when stock market first started, about 200 years ago, what do you would do? You would walk down to Wall Street, 68 Wall Street. You would talk to a broker and say, hey, you want, I, want to sell my, I want to sell my stock, and uh, I want to sell it at $100. Now, if you specify the price, there's no guarantee that you'll find somebody else willing to buy that stock at your price. Somebody might want to buy it at 90, at 95, at 98, doesn't matter. That offer may just keep on being open and never close because the broker, the, the market never finds a buyer to buy your stock at your price. So we might want to do, if it's a highly frequently traded stock, you might go to a broker, hey, listen, I just want to get rid of the stock. Right, I just want to get rid of, rid of the share that I have. The broker might say, listen, I'm the best broker here. I'll get you the best price ever, right? I'll get you the highest price that your stock can possibly get. Trust me, I got you. Now, because the broker wants to actualize this revenue pretty quickly and it only makes money when it sells your stock for you, a broker will just be like, hey, who wants to buy this stock? And let's you just find the best offer the broker gets. Maybe somebody wants to buy it at $95. Now, here's the thing. Broker might call you up and say, I sold your stock. The breast price we got for it was $90. Why? Because that difference between the 95 and what the broker is giving you, that's where the broker makes his money, makes their money. 
Now, because there's so many transactions happening and going to the broker every second, every, every second, they don't need to make a dollar or skim a dollar off every, or two or three or ten dollars off of every trade. They can get by with just skimming a cent on every trade, a fraction of a cent on every trade. Now let's bring the point home to how Robinhood makes money here. Robinhood isn't the actual company that's executing your trade. Robinhood isn't sitting in, in the trading floor selling your stock. No, Robinhood partners with a bunch of different brokers. And Robinhood reserves a right when you say sell my stock at $100 to assign that trade to any broker. And then in that second, in that all that nanosecond, Robinhood executes a bidding war between the brokers to say, hey, who's gonna give me the best kickback for me to give you this deal of selling this guy's stock for $100? Because mind you, they make money between what they paid you for your stock and how much they charge the other guy for buying the stock. These brokerages offer kickbacks to Robinhood. Robinhood, the reason they're in hot water, has negotiated a deal with the brokerages where they get paid on the percentage of the difference between the prices. How much the bidding price is, how much the asking price is. So what this means is if you wanted to sell at $100 and the market only got you the best offer at $80, they make money, they make a percentage of that $20. Now if the market only got you $50, they make money on that percentage of that $50. That means Robinhood is aligned with you placing riskier bets. Back to how they make money, they get payments from these brokerages to give them the order flow for your transactions. Now, for a retail investor who's just trying to buy, like you just trying to buy some Amazon stock, Google stock, and you say, hey, just get me some of this stock, instead of $100 and one cent, you end up paying $100 and two cents. That one cent doesn't really matter to most retail investors, but it does have an impact at scale. The, sh the brokerage is shaving off a cent per share, and the Robinhood getting a kickback from that doesn't really matter, wouldn't really matter much but they make 70% of their revenues from here. And that's how they're able to provide free commission trades because they make money on the back end. Let's look at the second way they make money. You could use the app for free or you could pay. They also have a premium offering, premium plan inside the application called Robinhood Gold. It gives you access to like market insights, analysis, reports, and gives you access to instant deposit. You don't have to wait five days for the money to clear from your bank into your Robinhood account. You could transfer the money instantly and invest that money right away. Third one, let's talk about margin interest. Uh, interest on margin loans. What that means is, let's say you have $5,000 of cash in your Robinhood account that you're investing. You're playing with your own hard earned cash. If you're part of Robinhood Gold and you pay them $5 a month, you also have access to margin investing. What that means is, Robinhood is going to look at how much cash you have in your Robinhood account, $5,000, and Robinhood is gonna match it. It's gonna double it. Essentially, it'll loan you that exact amount more so you can play with more money. You can invest with more money. Instead of $5,000, now you have $10,000 of buying power. And on this $5,000, you, Robinhood charges you interest, about 5% annual interest on the money you are you know, loaning, taking a loan from Robinhood on. This is risky, right? I don't recommend it. Most people don't recommend it. This is the only case where you can actually lose more than, you put, than what you put in. Because here's how. Let's say with that $10,000, you end up placing a bad bet. Now, Robinhood holds that collateral of the stock of the bad stock you bought. Robinhood can use that collateral, use that stock as collateral and sell that off to get its money back. So not only do you lose your, you could lose your $5,000 that you put in of your hard cash. If you end up, ended up losing Robinhood's $5,000 of cash also, Robinhood can then sell your stock. So it's a bit risky. Next way it makes money is interest on uninvested cash. So you put money into your Robinhood account and you haven't invested it yet. What do you think is happening with that money? Well, Robinhood isn't giving you interest on that, are they? No, but they are definitely depositing your cash in an interest bearing bank account and that bank is paying Robinhood interest on that money. And next way it makes money, and, and, and I love this, interest on securities. Let's say you bought a thousand shares of Apple. Uh, you're holding on to them, for, for, for a long period of time. I come around and I want to short Apple stock. I want to say Apple stock's gonna go down in price. Sure, that's what shorting means. I'm betting that the stock is gonna go down. If you are going to short a stock, you need to own the stock. You can't place that bet because you don't have anything to lose. You need the collateral in your hands in order to place a short option, in order to place a bet that says st stock is gonna go down because if it doesn't go down, 
they can then take away your collateral. They can take away the Apple stock you own. But I don't own any Apple stock. I don't own a thousand Apple stock, Apple shares. I come to Robin and Robin says, sure, you're, you don't own it? No problem. They'll loan me your thousand shares of Apple that are sitting in your account to go place this bet. You must be like, wait, how, how? What if I lose it? Yeah, what if I lose that money? What if I lose your shares? Well, don't worry. The securities that you have at a brokerage are insured. So if I end up losing it, you get your money back from the government up to a quarter million dollars. So Robinhood loans me your shares for me to go play with it and charges me interest for using that share. That's the revenue stream. That's called interest from securities. Last way it makes money, it has a new product offering, the debit card, right? You can use the cash that you have in your Robinhood account right away using a debit card. And every time you pay using that debit card, the merchants pay an interchange fee to the Visa and MasterCards and they pass on a kickback of some of that percentage uh, to Robinhood. There you have it, folks. They make money from payments from order flow from all the brokerages, margin interest, right? They get interest from the money they loan me by matching my buying power. They make money, they get interest payments from banks for your uninvested cash. They make interest on loaning out your securities and your stocks that are in your account, right? To somebody who wants to make a short sell and subscription revenues from Robinhood Gold and also uh, fees from debit card usage. Hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, if there are any other parts of Robinhood or investing that you'd like to know more about, or any of the startups or companies you'd like to know more, know more about, by all means, please comment at me in the, in the, in the, in the footer, uh, sorry, in the comment section, and I'll get right to them. A lot of time and effort goes into making these. I'd appreciate if you shared it with a few of your friends who also might be interested in the similar topics. And if you subscribe, you know, what really motivates us for bringing you more well-researched content. Thank you. This is Deepak Devjani. Signing off. I'll see you next time. Bye.